it says principal like I have knowledge, not, never mind, anyway, <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> so the story I'm about to tell you is 100% real. This actually happened, and it happened to real people. Roderick Russell was looking for a new roommate. He talked with his friends, he posted compelling ads on Craigslist of how awesome of a roommate he would be, and he talked with everybody but didn't have luck. And then he received a rather substantial email from a complete stranger. This email was from Brian. Brian drove home the point that they both love Doctor Who. He explained his research process using online profiles and he insisted that they would get along great. Most people find this creepy, and, but not, not for Roderick. Roderick loved it because it's exactly what he would do. Both of them met for coffee, hit it off, and they were best friends ever since. Brian and Roderick became fast friends, and as friends do, and especially roommates, they pulled pranks on one another. So imagine his surprise when, Brian, uh, when Roderick pulled a prank on Brian that lasted for weeks, and even had his friends in on it. Roderick, he's a professional sword swallower, and Brian wanted to get back at him equally. Although he swallows swords for a living, he had terrible difficulty swallowing pills. So imagine his surprise when he saw a Facebook ad that read, find it ironic that swallowing swords is easy, but you choke on little pills? It hit a little bit too close to home. It seemed to be the case that Facebook knew way too much about him, but how? Roderick took a screenshot of the ad and posted it on his Facebook wall, seeing if any of his friends also received that same strange post. He titled it, Most Targeted Ad in Facebook History. His friends responded with the same shock and awe as he did, as none of them received it. The ads didn't stop there. For weeks, he received a series of increasingly personalized marketing messages that made him paranoid. Although hilarious for Brian, Roderick was not impressed. He started to believe that a secret agency or Facebook was monitoring his phone calls or even his personal life. But the prank wasn't over. At this point, Roderick had convinced, uh, Roderick had co Brian had convinced Roderick that Facebook was predicting his personal life. And Brian needed to step up his game. He decided to build, build on that and subtly illustrate to his roommate that Facebook knew something about him that he did not. The next ad read, you like swallowing things? You're in luck. I have an offer for you. I'm way behind. These are going really fast. Okay. So, so after that, Brian knew about a, cold, a technique called cold marketing, a tactic where you market to an audience that you don't already know. To be most creative in cold marketing, you create general creative ads. With this knowledge, Brian decided to change up his ads slightly to appear as if Roderick was finding the ads and that they were not finding him. The gig went on without a hitch for a bunch of weeks. The next ad read, are you a strong top? If you're the kind of coffee drinking guy that likes black, that has a back, black bandana in his pocket, watch me with a YouTube link. At this point, the ad was a bit too specific and Roderick was a bit, bit suspicious of what was happening. Roderick posted a screenshot on his Facebook wall as he always did and said, I think Brian is behind this. Brian knew the jig was up. So he paused his Facebook campaign, hoping that he might be able to restart it in a few weeks, and denied everything. Brian's roommate, Roderick, he's very smart, and he quickly figured out that Ryan was indeed behind this. Roderick, without skipping a beat, posted his own targeted Facebook ad to Brian. The ad read, ever feel like your roommate is creating Facebook ads targeting to the niche of just you? <laughs> At that moment, Brian knew that once and for all, his prank was up. The next morning, Brian woke up to a message on their whiteboard, very, very, very well played, from Roderick. Brian, having completed a successful prank for weeks, had only paid $1.70 to his Facebook ad campaign. Cheap, cheap. Yeah, that's fun. Okay. <laughs> now, what can we learn from this? Unless, unless you want a good prank, you're probably not specifically targeting one specific individual. But, uh, Familiar with buying Facebook ads, Brian thought that he would test the boundaries of social media marketing and hyper-targeting. Lots of marketers call this ad strategy niche to one marketing, which can be quite effective, not just as a joke, but a way to generate sales and increase awareness. Digital marketing has changed the way people connect with their cus customers and their consumers. We spend more time on mobiles, tablets, laptops, than we do with people face-to-face. -face. Well, 
actually most of us do, not all of us, but some of us do anyways. Um, the challenge for marketing has not changed over the past 100 years, just a modality. Marketing these days, it needs to connect with people in real time across social media, the web, display advertising, and e-commerce. Leveraging the power of social media can elevate your audience and customer base, even help you connect with the people you didn't intend or outside of your demographic. To be effective at social media marketing, you need to understand who you want to target and what you want to do with them. So how do you do this? Well, you gather data. Now I'm ahead. Like, honestly, I feel like I, I can get this right. Like, I practiced at home, and it was so, like, on time. And now it's like, I'm too fast. Oh, there, data. <laughs> there it is. OK. So we gather data and understand your audience. Just like Brian did with Roderick, he knew that the key information that would attract Roderick to look and lure him into his ads, which led him to a change in his behavior, the paranoia that he had. The most important part of having success in digital marketing is understanding who, who you want as a customer or a target audience. Now that we understand who we're targeting, you have to make sure that the right messages, uh, that you send the right messages to gain traction and the desired outcomes. This is very important. Stay focused. It's better to specialize and be a jack of all trades. Highly focused digital marketing campaign can be far, far more successful than a broad strategy that tries to be everything to everyone. Remember, quality trumps quantity. So this is where I talked about making a Trump joke, like everybody, somebody told me to do this, and I didn't know what to do, so this is where I would have put a timely Trump ad. But, <laughs> okay, so, um, <laughs> Oh, it went back to the start. Awesome. So, it's more relevant to have 100,000 online connections who read, share, and talk about your content and their own audiences rather than 10,000 connections. And finally, now that we know our audience and now we know how to target them, we put into motion some of the hardest steps. Patience, acknowledgement, and reciprocity. Success won't happen overnight, so don't ignore somebody that reaches out to you. You wouldn't in person, so don't do it online. And finally, don't expect others to share your content and talk about you if you don't do the same thing. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs>